How's everybody doing? NVFY is the stock I'll be taking a look at here, 10-3-2016. Been getting a lot of inquiries about this stock because of the crazy move it's had the last few days, so I figured I'd break it down for everyone. Uh, basically, this is a furniture company. Yeah, it is a furniture company, not a very hot sector. Um, but it had some news, and I put that in quotes, of recently a basically an asset sale of $8.5 million. And you can see right here, Nova Lifestyles Manufacturing Operations in mainland China. It's closing expected October 30th, so the deal hasn't even officially closed. But yeah, $8.5 million. It's pretty small. That's nothing significant. The market cap of the company before the move was around 60, 65 million. So, you know, it's kind of crazy. The stock's been moving like it was, a, it's, it's been moving like a hundred million dollar sale took place or something. Uh, the stock's, it's gone from, you know, two dollars last few days up to 525. So, obviously, there's something else behind this besides just the news. There's something else going on behind the scenes here. Um, probably it could be a stock promotion, could be a big fish manipulating the price, pushing it up. I don't know. Somebody in the company, somebody hedge fund who has the position, I don't know. But we just know that something's fishy about the move. Um, I mean, it jumped another 40% today, and it jumped big yesterday as well on news of an $8.5 million deal. It just doesn't, just doesn't make any sense. So you can't really justify it. It's not logical. And some, you know, sometimes that happens with stocks. Stocks can move. They move big, and there's really no explanation for it. So it's kind of what you have here. Um, but let's take a look at a few other things. Let's go in and I want to show you the earnings on this thing. So if you look here, and, and I want to go ahead and point out, these are unaudited earnings. They are not even audited. Okay. And if you look at the net sales, we're looking at six months ended June 30th from 2015 to 2016. You can see the net sales have basically stayed the same, exactly the same year over year. So nothing impressive with the sales cost of sales has actually increased so you know a couple million dollars the the, the, the expenses uh, of this the cost of the sales have uh, actually jumped if you look at gross profit it's actually dropped two million dollars roughly uh, from 9.2 to 7.2 so that's negative um, and then when you go down you know and look at the all-important net income you can see that they went from having $1.4 million in net income to, to a loss. They dropped, from, dropped all the way down to negative 588000 in net income. So here you have a, you know, just to bring everybody back to reality on this thing, you have a negative 588000 net income, and the company's at 160, market cap, 160 million market cap. Okay? And all they had was an $8.5 million sale of assets. It just doesn't fit. Yeah, it just doesn't fit. Okay, so uh, so there's the earnings. Now, if if you look, if you look here, at Google Finance, you can see the market cap is 160 million. Um, it's got a very low float, 25. I think it's actually less. I think it's more like 15 million, possibly, uh, on the float. So you know, it definitely can move fast up and down, as we've seen. It's going to be volatile with with, with that, such a low float. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was 60 million the other day. It's jumped it's jumped 160 million. So you know. It's almost jumped a hundred million in market cap value on an eight point five million dollar sale of assets. Again, it's just crazy. All right. Um, I mean, you take a look at the website, and, and again, it's just a furniture company. It's just a, it's a furniture company. Give me a break. And then if you look down, they don't even. The copyright is still two thousand eleven. It's five years old, and I haven't even updated the website. So you can see that management isn't exactly on top of things here. Um, so yeah, that's you know just a few things. That's just kind of all you have to see to know that, that this is this is ridiculous. Um, now let's go back, and I want to look through some of the technicals on this. So, as everybody knows, who knows how I trade, that I look a lot on the technicals. I pay a lot of attention to support and resistance, and you know price action volume, and um, not so much on other things. I, I really, I like to look at the historical chart. So if you break down five years, you can see you get a get an idea of where this thing might stop moving. Um, you can see the previous support area, you know, here around the 420, 425. 
that was a pretty pretty strong potential resistance area. It did get through that. Now it's at about 50. Wait, let's see. Let me go back here. Right now the stock's after hours about 525. Okay, so let's go back to the five year. You can see you can see right here that about 530 right here. That is a definitely a possible potential resistance area right here, which happens to be right where it stopped after hours, right there at that 530. So that could be a place where the stock stops. And having the, the fact that it had that big pop into the close definitely could be could mean it might potentially drop big tomorrow because a lot of times big pushes into the close, they'll suck in a lot of bulls after hours and it ends up being a trap. And they were just selling short to the bulls that were buying long so that they were buying their shorts and then then the crash comes just when it looks strong that's when the crash comes so i'm definitely kind of a contrarian so a lot of people you know they i'm kind of looking on the opposite if everybody's going in everybody's going long that's kind of when i'm looking at potentially short and when everybody's you know shorting everybody's selling that's when i'm kind of looking to go for the long so i like to, i like to be contrarian but and of course, I will. You know, I will ride the trends as well. You just have to be careful because if you're riding the trend like this, it's up really high. You get the stock too high, and you're going to take a beating if you're long. So you just have to be careful. But yeah, that, that's. I mean, I'm seeing the 5:30 and then resistance after that. You've got kind of the 580 and the six area. But after that run today, and being the fact that this company has no real strength with that, you know, with that those earnings. Um, and you can see when it popped earlier today, it, it crashed really hard. So see, it's volatile, so it's probably going to do the same thing. Um, and, and you can see today, I mean, th this was crazy because it's, the stock started to fade. It popped pop, pop after hours, and that was a little suspect because on about 300 share volume, somebody came in at 4 a.m., okay? And retail traders can't trade except from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So pre-market and after hours, and then the regular market, 9.30 to 4 p.m., and then you've got you know 7 a.m. and then 8 p.m. it closes. But 4 a.m. if you see if you see moves happening at 4 a.m. that's somebody and that's that's somebody that's a bigger fish. That's an institutional insider person and and somebody popped at a dollar a share on like 300 shares. So see it's real easy to manipulate price after hours. So you gotta be careful. But yeah, that that got popped a dollar a share on three or 400 shares traded. That's just that's just crazy. And then it faded from there came down looked like it was kind of dying and then all of a sudden again somebody came in and just bought the heck out of some shares i think a million shares were traded right here in seconds it exploded a dollar a share you know again that's not retailers that's somebody came in that's orchestrated you know, pop probably a short squeeze somebody coming in and squeezing it they probably shorted up here about three hundred thousand shares were hit here at the top of that peak so somebody was probably coming and loading up some shorts after the push, and you can see it came down, and then again it got pushed again at the at the and after uh, um, in the afternoon, and pushed into the close and kind of had some trouble right here around the top, and of course after hours they manipulated it, got pushed it up a little bit, make it look like it's strong, make it look like it's going to run tomorrow, and it probably will not, it probably will crash. Um, so with this in mind, I'm going to put a price target on this of three dollars a share. I think this move the last couple of days is baloney. I think it's going to come down uh, in the short term, too. In the next few days to a week, this thing is going to come down, and it's going to correct a lot, and I think $3 a share is where it's going to find. That's, that's my target. Um, so if you're long on this, I definitely would recommend locking your profits, you know, and congratulations if you are because, you know, you had a nice run. But definitely lock your profits, and I would be looking for, sh for the short play. If I was you, I'd be checking that out right here after hours on that big move. Um, and then, yeah, I expect this to drop tomorrow. So, yeah, so that, that's that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions about NVFY, shoot me an email, always, bprising1 at gmail.com. And feel free to join our trading room, learn my uh, strategies, and get my stock alerts. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much.